Star Wars Battlefront 2. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words from 2005. Join the rise of Darth Vader's elite 501st Legion of Stormtroopers as you fight through an all new story based saga where every action you take impacts the Battlefront and ultimately the fate of the Star Wars galaxy. Yes, guys, this is the original uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 from 2005, the sequel to Star Wars Battlefront 1. And what a great game this was. I remember playing this back in the day and it was just something else. It was just something else. Now, I didn't really want to do this. I really didn't want to go back and do a retro wab on this for the simple reason I knew multiplayer would be completely and utterly screwed. And I was right, multiplayer is completely and utterly screwed. It doesn't support GameSpy anymore, obviously, so I had to use Game Ranger to actually find some games. And the problem is most of them are in North America. There was a pretty decent size uh, EU server with 32 out of 64 players on it. But as you can see from this, the lag was just, it was pretty much unplayable. There was people zoning all over the place, spinning on the spot, which means they are lagged. And... A lot of the player base were just wankers. They would just shoot you because you can team kill in this. They would just steal ships and just fly them into cliffs uh, or just park them over for the other team to get. It's kind of what happens when people have been playing a game for like 12 years and they're getting, they're getting sick of it now and they just want to f*** about. Uh, so it is sad, but I've had my best revisit times playing the uh, bot matches, uh, the single player bot matches. And, and conquest and things like that so it was sad to see this game as it is now um, but I still had some great times I still had some good fun on it but it's nowhere near as good as it used to be when it first came out and this well, will never do this game justice but seeing that what is it like I am doing this in 2017 so what is it like in 2017 well if you've never played it um, you wouldn't recognize it if you played it after playing last year's Star Wars Battlefront. It's, they are, it's a travesty that they're using the name Star Wars Battlefront for the shite that they put out in 2016 uh, with this name. Uh, it's nothing like it, guys. It really is. There's a few similarities, but the gameplay is totally different. For a start, this game is huge. It has 16 new locations, like 16 of them. It has so many maps so many planets so many units it has loads of different classes that you can choose and if you remember last year they removed the class i don't want this to be a com comparison there is no comparison it's like comparing a prime ribeye steak to a moldy piece of shit when you compare this to last year's star wars battlefront so we'll not do that anymore i know i will but you know but basically what you've got in this you have a massive single player experience where you can just set up your own games and just play against all the bots which are pretty handy may i add they're not shite you have loads of game modes you've got conquest assault capture the flag you've got hunt you've got this big huge um galactic conquest option which is basically you control a fleet and you get a thousand credits and you have a map and you move your star destroyers if you play in the empire around the map and you fight over planets you take the planet you get more money and more money means you can buy more soldier classes and more ships and stuff like that and it's 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 a turn-based game but with real-time battles over the different things that you're fighting over it's really good fun and i can't believe they left it out of the new game which i said i wasn't going to compare but what I really like about this game and what I really loved about it when I was playing it is the whole fact that you can jump into a spaceship, fly it out of a hangar, attack Star Destroyers, attack Corvettes, attack other ships in space and the control is absolutely phenomenal. It is so good. The control over the spaceships is just, it just works with a mouse and keyboard. Perfect. Absolutely fine. You're just whizzing around all over the place. Absolutely fine. When you played last year's, I said I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it. When you played last year's and you were playing in the spaceships, they were, it was it was like trying to fly in treacle it was awful the turning circles were shite it was just bad controls clunky shit everywhere with a mouse and keyboard and probably the same with the controller i mean the amount of people complaining about it it was just how the f can they not program in 2017 and 2016 basic flight controls I mean, with with the budget that these f have got what the f are they doing 
Oh yes, that's right, they're too busy uh, making cutscenes. So it was a joy to play this and just fly an X-Wing, an A-Wing, a TIE Fighter and all the others. There's a whole host of spaceships you can fly. It was just so much fun. It was great on Hoth with the land speeders, just flying it around and using the tow rope on the, uh, the AT-ATs and tripping them up. Unfortunately, I never got to do that this time round because despite sitting in there for two f***ing hours just trying to get a wingman to get in there on the harpoon and do it, Oh, they just, it's, it's, it's awful now in multiplayer, it really is. But in America it looks good, on the American servers it looks good, there was like 64 out of 64 and I was just thinking I'm going to go in there but the lag was just way too much so got to keep out which is a bit of a shame. Anyway back to the, the controls, the con this game is so smooth, it's so slick, the aiming of the guns is just light years ahead of what we have now, it's, I, I don't know what it is, I, I don't know what it is but these games just play it so much better than modern games. You'd have to try it. For, don't take my word. Go and try it. You'll see exactly what I mean. Jump in a spaceship and you'll be like, "What the? F this is this is spot on." Pick up a gun. It's like, "Wow, the sights are bang on." It's it's. Then then play the last years and it's just all f***ed up. Dice need to really get the finger out. They should make everybody play this before they go any further with Star Wars Battlefront 2. Everybody should play this. That's programming that f***ing game with a mouse and keyboard as well. So you've got all these different game modes and like I said, I've been playing in multiplayer but it's laggy as anything. So playing with the bots is fun. It's still good fun. You get in tanks, you get in all kinds of vehicles. But what really makes this good is the Jedi classes. You have Jedi classes and you can just, after a while, you can, you, uh, you can play as a Jedi class and there's lots of different ones. There's Luke Skywalker, there's these other guys who you'll all recognize from the Clone Wars and things like that. And it is so good playing as them. They are It's so smooth and so slick. You've got a, a force, power, and you've got your basic um, attack moves. And it's just simply move your mouse wheel forward and you can just switch whatever force power you're using, whether you're throwing your lightsaber or just pushing people out of the way. You can just leap up, 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 and double jump, triple jump right across the bloody map and then land and then just slice somebody's face off. It is just, it's so fluid. This is the thing that, really I forgot how fluid this game was. I was playing Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 the other day and again it was so f***ing fluid. It's it's kind of weird how modern games just can't do it anymore. It's, it's I don't know what it is with them. It's just so f***ed up. But there's so much content guys in this and I know the new one uh, that comes out this year that the, they've got rid of the season pass and all that but you know, they'll never f***ing learn, guys. They'll never learn. They'll never learn. I mean, it's a good, it's a step in the right direction, but, you know, when you play this and you see the sheer vastness of content in this, no wonder the gaming industry's in a f***ing mess, guys. It's just, yeah, it just is. So you can choose your sides, you can choose your map, you can choose your, your class, which is all good in, in this type of game. I'm not really usually into class uh, choosing, but in this, it doesn't reward people for playing longer. It's kind of fair. You know, it's not like, oh, you've played it for 10 hours and you've unlocked this weapon, which is better than the people over there who haven't played for 10 hours. There's none of that bullshit. It's all fair and square, and you've got to balance your team out and have the right amount of rocket launchers, snipers, and things like that. Now, also as well, what really makes this fun is there's no vehicle pickups. The, the vehicles are where the fucking should be, in the hangar. You want a vehicle, you go and get one out of hangar. What is so, what is wrong with that? Why do we have to have them as pickups now in the new ones, which I'm comparing it to again? It's just so f***ed up. It's so f***ed up that you're running along the, the, the map now in the modern ones and you'll see a little globe that says, I'm a TIE fighter. Pick me up. Huh. Pick him up. Oh, I'm, I'm now morphing into a TIE fighter. Oh no, I've been shot while I was morphing into a TIE fighter. In this one, there's a hangar. And it's full of f***ing TIE Fighters. You want a TIE Fighter, you run in the hangar and get one. You just press the space bar, takes off, press forward and whoosh, you're straight out there. And you're flying around and it's f***ing great. The sound effect is great, the music in the background, the John Williams scores all there. And it is such an immersive, brilliant game this. And it's a travesty that the new one's a big pile of f***ing moldy diarrhea. But sadly guys, I have to say that the multiplayer is just not what it used to be in this game. It's just not in it. I didn't expect it to. I'm not stupid. It's not going to be all these years later. But the fact that there's still servers up now is just a testament of how good this game is. And can I just say, GameSpot gave it 7.8 out of 10. That's what GameSpot gave this back in two. It just, doesn't it just show you how f***ed up 
these people are that are reviewing games. You know, 7.8. They gave Horizon Zero Dawn 9 out of 10. They gave this, which is light years ahead of all of them, 7.8. Wow. Just fucking wow, guys. I know you can't really compare them from back then to now, but I just did my channel. So there you go, guys. Is it worth a buy now? Not from a Jedi. Not, sorry, I could say that. Not in... <laughs> <laughs> no, not in multiplayer unless you live in North America, unfortunately, but it is worth having just for the bots and for the fluidity of it and the fun of it and the fact that it's very, very moddable, this game, and there's a lot of mods for this game. Um, it does run on Windows 10. This is all footage from Windows 10. So it does work, but I have read that there's some people having trouble with it. I'm going to thumb it up because it's one of the best games ever made on the PC. It hasn't survived well in multiplayer, but it is still worth the buy. The single player works, the bot match works, and it's still fun today.